feed is the area of the solution manager, the administration area, that if you have been using solution manager version seven, you are already familiar with. And here on the left, we have the different servers that, we, that I have registered here. We have one for the development and one for finance production on my premises. But I'm going to create a new server on AWS and you will see how easy, how easy it becomes to do this now. So I just click here, click new environment, and here's the new feature. Environment type, automated mode. Select here, and I'm going to put, uh, for example, AWS webinar. I will not provide any description. Like in the Node 7, you have to provide a, you have to select the license. And here's where the differences start. You can select here the AWS region where you want this, the Node servers to run. So I just click here. I click save and the environment is created. And now I see here the message and it's asking me, do you want to create a cluster now? So the process seems similar, but now here's a bit, a bigger difference. I can provide here another name, AWS webinar cluster. And here I just have to select the key pair. Uh, when you connect, to an EC2 machine on a of AWS, you always need when you do it when you want to connect with SSH, you you have to select a key pair. That's a private key that you use to connect to that machine, and you need to select one. These are the ones that I already have created on my account. I will select mine. You also select a subnet. And here, and here is the nice thing. Let's say I want my cluster to have for VDP servers, I just enter four, and I just enter the type of instance that I want to create. And here I just define the configuration of the load balancer. Uh, this is the name that the load balancer will have. I just select the, this load balancer to be internet facing. Uh, this option of internet facing, most of you, you will probably select no most of the time, at least, on real case scenarios because usually companies have a VPN between the computers of the users and their machines on AWS. The, that's the network uh, on, of AWS. But if you don't have that kind of VPN, you can just select the S and then the VDP server becomes available to the internet. And well, it's not exactly available to the internet. I will talk about this later. And the other option that is very interesting is that you can create an auto scaling group. Uh, that means that auto scaling group is a concept of AWS where you can define a policy and say, for example, from Monday to Friday, I will, I will have these four servers that I put here, but then on the weekend, I will just reduce these to two because no one uses the node that much on the weekends. So I can shut down two of the servers to save on infrastructure costs. And these are options about the storage, the EBS storage on AWS. You can leave the default options most of the time. And here's a key concept that we have on the automated mode. The node already provides by default an Amazon machine instance that includes the node 8 already pre-installed. So this means that when these instances start, this instance will have a, the node 8 already started and already running. Again, this option then about security groups. So security groups in AWS is like a firewall that controls the inbound and outbound traffic to, to these instances. And that's why when I said before, internet facing load balancer, even if you set up a cluster of the nodal servers to be load balance, to be internet facing, you still have a security group that restricts the ports that are accessible. And then in addition to that, you can go 
to the AWS console and change the configuration of that security group and maybe limit the IP addresses that can access these ports to give you additional control. But that is also that it's something that you can do once you have created the cluster. So here to recap what I'm doing, I'm, I'm creating four instances, EC2 instances that will run VDP. And then here, let's say I want to use the data catalog, but I don't think I will need, I will use the data catalog as much as VDP. So I will just enter two and maybe select a smaller instance type. And then here on the load balancer, we have similar options. Let me leave this open. We have the same options that we had for VDP. We also have these options for the EVS storage. And then we have obviously the same advanced options and the same with a scheduler. For a scheduler, I will just enter one because I think I only need one instance, one EC2 instance for a scheduler. And here I just have to select yes and leave the default options and I will click save. And when I click save, the solution manager invokes the APIs of AWS and automatically creates the EC2 instances with the instant, the instant type I selected here. It creates the load balancer. In the case of VDP, it creates uh, the auto scaling group. Uh, it creates the security groups. And, you know, this is like, if you do this manually, this might take hours. Uh, so now I'm opening the overview tab where I can see the status of the cluster as it's been created. And I click here and I can see the different events. You see, creating the data, the load balancer for data catalog, registering the EC2 instance. And this takes about five minutes, so I'm not going to wait until this finishes. But oh, yeah, no, it's, let's see, did it already finish? Yeah. It already finished. So now I can click here, click refresh catalog, and I already have my four VDP servers ready to be used. 